Today we're going to discuss direct current power distribution, maybe from your solar ammo can or your alternative energy system or your battery bank, and how that relates to the devices that we use around our home every day. A lot of the things that we purchase in the store are made to go or be powered by our AC wall outlets. And our AC wall outlets, at least in America, are providing 100, 110, 120 volts AC to your device. However, that's not what's actually going to your device. And what I mean by that, if we look here on the table, this is something very common. You might use something like this to charge your cell phone or charge your tablet or even run a small TV or other type of device or appliance. Uh, this box right here that plugs into the wall is a switching adapter or transformer. And what it does is it takes that AC power, 100, 110 volts, 240 volts if you're overseas, and it switches it down or transforms it down to direct current power. This one right here, it's, it's, you can't really see it on this video, but it takes 100 to 240 volts AC and switches it down to 5 volts DC to charge uh, a laptop or a tablet or something like that, a small device. But really, your device then only requires 5 volts DC. Now, why is that important to understand? A lot of us think in terms of getting a battery bank or using our vehicle battery, which is usually 12 volts. Uh, people that have larger alternative energy systems might have a 24 or 48 volt battery bank. But for most of us, we're, we're talking about a 12 volt battery bank. And then we'll partner that with a, an inverter to be able to plug this thing into to power our device. However, we don't really need an inverter to do that because what we can use is what's called a DC to DC converter. What are those? Up here on the table we have several examples of DC to DC converters. There's many different types of these and if you search Amazon or eBay and you put DC to DC converter a lot of these will pop up. And for the most part they will be compatible with the things that you really need to power with them. So we can take our 12 volt battery bank and then we can charge that device or power that device or whatever without using this and just use these. On some of them, like this one, you have different ends and this happens to be a micro B, micro USB, which is a very common cell phone adapter right now. Um, and you can plug the positive and negative leads here to your battery bank, put them on a switch, whatever you want to do. And then once you plug this in, it's going to start charging your device. All right, this one right here is 12 volt to 5 volt DC. Some of these are 24 volt to 5 volt or 12 to 24 volt to 5 volt. You just have to check with the actual one that you're purchasing to see exactly what the voltage range is. This is also very similar to the one that I just showed you, except for there's not ends on this one that would you know plug into your cell phone. This is also a 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC converter. The positive and negative black and red wires here would go to your battery bank. The red and yellow wires here, red positive, yellow would be negative, would go to an outlet or something that you can plug into. And I'll give you another example of this in a minute. Lastly, we have one that you can adjust. And it's hard to see here, but there's a little screw right here, and you can adjust this. Uh, you would solder in your positive and negative on one side, and you'd have positive and negative outs coming on the other. And it's clearly marked on this thing, even though you can't see it on here. But what you can do then is step down that 12 volt DC to the voltage that you need. Why is this important? Well, I recently built a box, and I'll go over it here in a second, that was meant to power a lot of different things. And I needed one that was a 9 volt uh, power outlet. I didn't have a 9 volt power outlet plug DC DC converter just like this. So what I did was use this adjustable one to give me 9 volts. If I needed 4.5 volts or 2 volts or you know 10 volts, this one will allow me to do it, where these more specialized ones that you cannot adjust probably will not get you to where you need to be. Now, it's possibly a rare case situation where you might need to use one of these. However, I recommend at least getting a few of these for those just-in-case scenarios. So now let's put it all together. This is a project that we built for demoing at a recent prepper show. Um, 
just to show you exactly what you could possibly do with this. And this is just an ABS enclosure, uh, which is plastic and it's easy to work with. It's easy to use a dremel tool and cut it, cut it out pieces. Um, and what it has in here is a whole bunch of just random stuff. And when we build our projects, we like just to throw a whole bunch of stuff in there just to show you that it can be done. But really, we didn't need to go all out crazy like on this one. However, it is still very useful. Uh, we have a series of DC-DC converters. We have an adjustable one up under there. On the front, two of our DC-DC converters are actually USBs. So we have two USBs here. Um, we also have four 12-volt outlets just in case uh, we, we don't always need to step down the DC to a different voltage. You might just need 12 volt. We have some switches here to turn on and off these converters. These converters can use power and standby, so we always recommend putting a switch somewhere in the line. Um, and then we have two 5 volts and one 9 volt uh, outlet. Up here we have a six gang fuse block and this just allows us to fuse it in case there's any surges in power and on the back side we have a normal plug here where we can plug in and provide power to the whole box. So this is just really an example of putting it all together uh, so that you can have a centralized location to plug into if you wanted one, something like this. However, you don't really need to do all that. Um, here's another example of using a 12 volt to 5 volt step down DC DC converter and then on one end we go to the battery power and then on the other end we have the device out plug and so what this one is actually for is an IP phone and we'll go over that project in the very near future but this allows me just to have a power cord for this IP phone uh, without using this big um, distribution box so again you, you have to understand your devices for for this to really work out uh, if you check on your, your laptop your tablet if you use this USB then it's going to be 5 volts so you'd be safe using one of these USB um, DC DC converters uh, USB is standard 5 volts so there's nothing really to worry about there um, but if you have another device maybe a, a lantern or uh, a small TV, uh, then you, you really need to understand the voltage and you can check that on the device or the, the power brick or the, the transformer that it has to let you know exactly what that voltage is. But please let us know if you have any questions. We're going to continue a little bit more on this series and we look forward to your feedback. Thanks for watching.